because you were one of the first ones who out, weren't you? Like you didn't even come, but you like got straight on a plane back to Canada. Well, I uh, actually I booked two flights because the first one I booked uh, for month for Tuesday, and uh, they they shut down the border in the uh, U.S., so I had to take another flight to make sure I don't go to through USA to go back to Canada. So yeah, I was uh, pretty quick out of England. Uh, well, it looked like you've been keeping busy on your Instagram anyway. <laughs> Man, like since I've been back, I mean, to be honest, I got here and I didn't, I didn't move a second for like I didn't get out of the house for two weeks straight, fourteen days. Uh, but after that, I just start you know run training again and start you know get motivated for the next season already. Hopefully, it's gonna happen. But yeah, and you, like you said to me the uh, the other day, you can get back on the ice soon as well. Man, we were supposed to go back on the ice on Thursday, uh, but right. Uh, as we speak right now, it's a uh, it's a whole problem because I'm working. Uh, I'm gonna stay with a, with the school, so they have different rules right now. But we are pushing right now to uh, if it's not this Thursday, it's gonna be uh, early next week. So that's you know that's a big step for us. Hopefully July first, everything's gonna be back to normal with some restriction. But hopefully, hopefully we're back to normal. And how much have you missed? I, I was in in England though. I was in Nottingham. Is it back to almost normal? It's getting there. They uh, yesterday they opened up all the non-essential shops, so everything started to everything's starting to open up a little bit more again now. I went back awesome. into I went into Nottingham for the first time since March twenty third yesterday to go and do some stuff in the office. And it's like wow. I, I I just missed walking through the city. Like I remember how nice it is just to walk through there. Oh man, you know what? I miss Nottingham so much. I miss the downtown and like you know just walking around, grab a coffee. I was. Talking to my mom uh, two days ago uh, on Sunday, we were actually grabbed, I had grabbed a coffee with her and I told her, I said, you remember when we were meeting you in other hands? She's like, one of the best places she ever been to, you know? So I, I can understand how you miss Nottingham downtown, just go That's through some stuff. I can understand that, yeah. <laughs> I'd say you were only there for like a month or two months and, you, and you, could, you made a real connection with the city and the fans and everything the short time you were there. Man, that's what I, to be honest, like, that's what I, it happened like I got there. Obviously, I, I was motivated. That's that's you know, the first thing. But I didn't expect to fall in love with that city and the uh, the organization and the people around me that much. You know, everywhere I've been to it was always nice. I always had some connection and some some part of like you know uh, being part of something. But in Nottingham, like it was something different. Uh -huh. uh, that's the reason why you know you, you told me my on my Instagram I didn't you know didn't take too much time off, go back on the road, but like that was one of the biggest motivation for me was that, you know, like hopefully there'll be hockey next season I mean, hopefully I'm going to be back in that time. That's one of my, uh, my biggest, you know, uh, the, one of the biggest motivation right now is that's what it is. And I, I remember that first day I met you in Nottingham, you were so excited to be there. Oh man, I, <laughs> I remember the first day I was a little nervous. I'll be honest with you, I was a little nervous because like, uh, I had a good friend, Dan Spang, who played there, and he told me about, you know, all, all the uh, atmosphere and everything. And, well, first of all, when I walked uh, into the rink and I see all the, you know, all, all the stands and all the seats and all that stuff, like the big screen, uh, yeah, it was something, you know, I was like, no, nervous, but really, 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 like, motivated and um, excited, that's for sure, yeah. And you said you're good friends with Dan Spang. What did he tell you? Did you ask him about Nottingham after Guy and Tim reached out to you? Yeah, you know what, like, uh, you know, that's, that's a funny story with Dan Span because um, he was my first, when I was 19 years old, he was my first roommate uh, with the Dallas Stars in the American League. And 10 years later, uh, we played uh, the year I played Frankfurt uh, in Germany. He was my roommate, uh, not, sorry, not my roommate, my teammate again, you know, so it was funny because like 10 years later, we go, you know, we meet again and same, uh, same uh, atmosphere, hockey, so it was fun, but yeah. Uh, Spine played two years in Nottingham and he just enjoyed so much. And uh, when I had the opportunity to um, to uh, go play for Nottingham, he just told me, "Man, you should no brainer. Just go, just go there. It's gonna you're gonna have an awesome time. Uh, the organization is really good. You're gonna love the city. You know what? At first, I was like, you know, I believe him a lot. I trust him a lot. So I was like, yeah, you know what? Man, let's do this. But like like I said before, once I got there, it was um, way more than what I expected." And you came to Nottingham from the, the play, from playing in Slovakia. What was the yeah. hockey like out there? What was that like? It's uh, you know what? Um, I know the Slovakian league. Uh, 
Tipa Liga, the Tips Liga. It's a really good league, really fast. Uh, those uh, the Slovakian player uh, are really skills and uh, uh, so it's a little bit different than uh, than uh, the, the, the EIHL hockey. The EIHL hockey is, is a little bit more North American type of hockey. A lot of um, a lot of hitting, a lot of you know, a lot of fighting, which you know, that part of hockey uh, kind of miss a little bit. I uh, really enjoy it, so that's why I'm doing a little boxing this summer. So maybe it's gonna <laughs> maybe it's gonna help me too. Uh, but yeah. Uh, and so it's a little different, the Slovakian League and uh, England League are a little different. Um, I would say it's a little bit uh, more speed or quickness in the Slovakian League and more toughness in the EIHL, that's for sure. And then when you get, you speak about the physicality and things, when you, you make your home debut in that game against Fife, that well, was a bit of a whirlwind. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know what? I, uh, I miss it. You know, I miss that part of hockey. When I, um, you know, when I got the goosebump a little bit right now when you told me that. Because it was awesome, and uh, that's the thing. I guess a little bit that part of hockey when I got back to nothing. I'm, you know, more Canadian, more American. Uh, those British guys are actually like they play with greedy too. That they're really intense. And uh, when this thing happened, you know, like that feeling I had. That's the reason why the whole situation I'm gonna remember all my life. And this this feeling was amazing. And you know, when whenever Jones went down and I stand up and I see the fans going all crazy, well. You know, that's how, that's why you, you play hockey for those uh, moments, those emotion. And uh, since then, you know, like I got that little twig again and uh, I really enjoy it. That's for sure. So you get that, that moment where you've got, you're waving your arms around to the crowd to get them going. Then you go to the penalty box and the camera puts you on the big screen and you just <laughs> stick your tongue out and the whole crowd just goes crazy. Oh, yeah. you know, that's why, you know, that's the reason why every hockey player play that, you know, but that all like, that all emotion and, uh, when a crowd get into it, I mean, man, how amazing are those, those, those fans? You know, I still talk to them, and like, hopefully, they, uh, I'm going to see them again next season uh, because they're they're amazing. I mean, I'll, like you said, I only been there for a month and a half, but I every time I've been on the ice, there was like no no like no question that the, the fans going to be behind us. So can't wait if I can if I have the opportunity to to live that for a full season. For me, that would be amazing. And then that, that gritty heart on your sleeve style, is that how you've always been? Obviously, you had to adapt to play in Slovakia, but have you always had that from like when you were a junior and coming through? Well, yeah, obviously, like when I was junior, I was, uh, always, I was the skill player, the guy who always like, you know, put some points on the board and stuff. And then um, when I was 19 years old, when I signed my first contract with uh, the Dallas Star, uh, Glenn Dodson, who's uh, is an amazing coach, uh, came to me. At the end of the training camp, and he told me he wanted to play the American League this year as a 20 years old. You have to uh, you have to do something that other players are not willing to do. So since then, I started to add some some stuff into my game to become a complete player. And one of the things I had to do is uh, you know uh, get under the uh, opponent's skin, uh, opponent's skin, and you know be in their face and drop my glove uh, when when the time is is right. And, uh, you know, they just follow me through my, my career. And, uh, I mean, I played six seasons in the American League, which I made a name out of that type of hockey. Like, you know, like people recognize me for the little rat or but I, I, I can't say, I can't say it on the camera, but I get, I get different other names too, which, you know, <laughs> they're not the best. But for me, sometimes if I don't, if I don't back in the days, if I don't get those nicknames, I didn't do my job, you know. So, uh, yeah, I enjoy that. And that's one thing, like, uh, in nothing I now that I can go, I can go back to my, my roots a little bit, you know, that I enjoy playing that type of game. So hopefully, hopefully you're going to keep that that way. Well, I remember standing in the, uh, like the middle, you know, we had that scrimmage for the season ticket holders and it was like rest of the world versus team Canada and you and Brian Connolly were just going at each other. Uh, <laughs> you know what? That's hockey, man. Like, you that's, you know, why we started to play hockey when three, four years old. And um, uh, the reason why we started to play hockey because we have fun, you know. So uh, now, now I'm three years old and I still have fun. And, uh, you know, and I asked Connie to drop his glove. And hopefully he's not going to listen to that to that interview. But I asked him to drop his glove and he told me his thumb was hurt. So he couldn't, couldn't fight. I was like, okay, that's good for me. But next game we go. I say, as that kind of player, what's the best? Actually, what's the best chirp you would say you have given, and what's the best one you've received? 
Well, I mean, the, the one I can't actually say on TV or on a camera. Like, uh, I, I got a few. I got a few good that I said. Obviously, like uh, in finals, uh, I got hit in front of the bands, and one guy start to start to, uh, to say some bad stuff at me, and the puck is right. So the, the ref blew the whistle. The puck was right between my skate, and whatever the, the play was over, and the guy started to say something to me, and I grabbed the puck and I said, "Hey, buddy." He hadn't touched the puck all game. Here we go. And I put a puck on the bench to him. I mean, that's, uh, you know, that was a little like, oh, boy. Like, all the, the his coach started laughing. You know, the, the other players on the bench started laughing. And, you know, I had to I had to face the music after the guy came to me and we had a scrap. And it was in final. I remember that was in final in, uh, when I was playing for the Idaho State ahead way back my first uh, pro season. So, I don't know, for some reason, I remember that, that trip. Um, that chirp uh, like it was yesterday. And uh, the one I received, I mean, you know what? It's, it's kind of hard to get under my, my skin, to be honest. But uh, the fact that I'm missing twos, you know, like that's, uh, that's uh, I get a lot of chirp about that. And uh, my broken nose or the, the, the way sometimes I speak English, because my, you know, my first language is French. Uh, but to be honest, one exactly, uh, a trip that I can remember on me, like I tried to, like you know, get into my hair and get out to focus on my game. And so you say your native tongue is French. Does you grew up in Quebec? Um, yes. Is that so? I'm guessing it was always hockey for you. You grow up with hockey, sort of thing. You know what? It's funny you uh, asked me that question because this morning I was training and uh, one guy was asking me like, when did you start to play hockey? And I, I don't know for some reason I said, hey, you know what? I probably start to skate before I walk. You know, <laughs> so that's the thing. I started playing hockey when I was three, four years old, and uh, here it's like it's like a religion. You, you kid, you you play hockey uh, right away. It's like a little bit of football or soccer for for uh, for Great Britain for England. So, uh, so yeah, I started when I was three or four years old. I didn't really enjoy hockey to be honest until uh, I was maybe ten or twelve years old. Uh, but uh, all my friends was playing, so I kept playing. And like, look at me now. I mean. No, it's good I didn't stop, you know? It's a good decision. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's it. What, what players did you look up to? Like, I imagine you're watching the Montreal Canadiens and things like that. What players did you, who did you identify with sort of thing? Like the team, you mean? Team and favorite players as you're growing up. Uh, oh, as I grew up, obviously, like, like I mean, uh, I just came back to Montreal for the summer. Usually I used to train in Boston. I used to train in Boston. I trained in the U.S. for a long time. Uh, but I mean, sure, but Montreal, like, you know, it's my birthplace. It's my, where all my friends are. I'm a huge family guy. Uh, like, you know, my family for me is everything. Uh, my sister just got, um, uh, she has four kids and one other on the way. So, you know, so I, I would say Sherbrooke, Montreal, Sherbrooke, Quebec is my, is my place where I really enjoy to be. And uh, you asked me growing up, my team. Uh, I never was a Montreal Canadian fan. Uh, all my friends didn't like me. They did like me. They didn't like me the fact that uh, my team growing up was uh, Ottawa. The okay. Senator. Yeah, the Senator. Uh, uh, like a long story short, um, when uh, my first agent uh, used to represent uh, Martin Avla, uh, Zeno Charo, uh, Daniel Atkinson, all those Ottawa guys. And when I was young, 12 years old, 12 or 13 years old, my agent made me to a hockey game, which was Montreal against Ottawa. And I had the opportunity to meet those guys. So I met uh, Antoine Grimet, Martin Alda, Darren Anderson, General Shira. I named, named them back in the days when they were playing for Ottawa. And then after that, I was just falling in love with Ottawa. So that's the reason why I, I was growing up a fence, senator of Ottawa fans. So. What about you? Who's, who's your team? My team is the New York Rangers. Really, eh? Oh, man. That's a good pick. That's a good yeah. pick. I have um, a couple of friends who play there, so... Yeah, I remember about, me and my friend played a game. I think it was like NHL 2009 on the PlayStation. And I picked, <laughs> I picked, I picked the Rangers, and ever since then, I've been loyal to the Rangers. They've come that's close a few that. times, but they've let me down. And plus, they're an East Coast team, so they're easier to watch, so, which is important <laughs> over here. They had some good. Uh, they had some good year, and I think they're on the right path right now to, to build something good. But that's fun. That, that, that's funny that you're uh, a Rangers fan, huh? That's awesome. And when you get to meet a guy like Zdeno Chara, 
Can you believe how big he is in person when you meet him? Like six nine. I couldn't like you know like that's something that I couldn't really imagine how like those guys play against a guy like that. You know, I'm not saying anything bad, but like there's some player are pretty small, mm-hmm. like five six, five seven, and you go against a guy who's general shout out six nine and probably like you know two hundred and something pounds, like. Uh, I mean, that's crazy. But like when I met him, it was amazing. 12 years old and what's, that's like no long time ago. So like that's 18 years ago and I still remember that like it was yesterday. And then you said you spent six years in the American Hockey League. Did you go to any NHL preseason games? Were you ever close to getting that call up to the show? You know what? Uh, I'll be honest with you. I uh, played nine preseason games total. Uh, but to get... To get close to the NHL, I would say uh, I was at one point uh, my two year my contract uh, with Dallas. So my second year my uh, my second contract, I was close at one point. I thought maybe I had a chance, uh, but like every year in North America, you got some guys who's coming, you know, from the draft, from college, from junior, some tryout who signed. So uh, I had some really good season in the American League uh, as the type of player I was playing, and. Um, yeah, I think my opinion is I had a chance one time and it didn't work out. Uh, I never get the call, which, you know, like, you know, give me that one game. Give me that one <laughs> game. But uh, I went with some step back and you look at, you know, what I did. Uh, I'm really proud of, like, you know, 300 game in the American League and all that stuff. Like, uh, I mean, it's, it's a great, uh, great achievement. Uh, but like I said, again, like, you know, I just I wanted a one game and, uh, that would be a different story. Uh, like when I was talking to John Rowe, um, who got five games in the NHL, uh, you know, so it was, uh, you know, we talked about it and we would we make them in Belfast for that one night and spend there before we came back. And that's what he was saying. He was like, man, this, like, you know, work all your life for that one game. And once you get that one game, you want more, but like you still have that one game. So same thing, you know, talk with a bunch of guys uh, about that one game and they're pretty proud about it. And you got to think that the American Hockey League, that's still a very, very good league. It's potentially the fourth best hockey league in the world around the NHL, the KHL, and the SHL. And then, then it's the American Hockey League is right there then. Well, when you think about it, like, it's a step right before the NHL. Like, you kind of accept, like, all those superstars who make a step right away to the NHL. Like, uh, you have to go through uh, the American League, which the guys, like, the dream is right there. So the motivation is probably a little bit more, you know, like the guys are trying harder. Guys are uh, doing a little bit details like there to there to like, you know, they got a chance to make it to the NHL. So it's a huge competition inside of the team as well. So it's a great experience. Like, don't get me wrong. It's just, I would say, like you said, the top four or five uh, league in the world. Uh, but like uh, the biggest difference, that's why I said, is the a, is a motivation or the, the work headache of the guys. Because it's right there, like, you know, like you got those guys who are like, hey, uh, I'm probably going to be the next one to get caught up if someone got hurt. And uh, like I saw some guys, you know, working really hard just to like, you know, so that's the thing I, I realized in American League. I don't say that other leagues, you don't work hard, but just the motivation. It's uh, like, you know, we want to be in NHL since you're a kid. You're right there. So guys are working double. And so after six years in the American League, you decide to make the jump over to Europe. What, what led to making that decision? Well, um, it, it's, a, it's a, bunch of, um, uh, a bunch of stuff altogether. Uh, in the American League, there's, a, there's a rules where you, uh, you're a veteran. Okay. Which means uh, 300 and plus, uh, I think something like 260 games. After that, you become a veteran. So I play, and you only, you only can have five veterans in the American League. Uh, I, got, I got two years of veteran. So, sorry, one and a half of veteran. And after that, I was like, okay, it's time to go to uh, overseas and try to, uh, you know, enjoy hockey um, uh, in a different way, obviously. So that's why I realized, uh, I realized, you know, when I first got to Germany, I was like, wow, this is good hockey too. I, uh, I really, uh, I got surprised. I, got, um, uh, I didn't expect to be good hockey at the same time. You know what, like it's a little bit less game, 52 games. Uh, you got, you know, time uh, to travel, time to live. Uh, to live a little bit more like the, the, the family life and all that stuff. So that's, I think that's the reason why I, uh, I, I decided to make the move. 
And said, and I was going to ask you about the culture change because America is a hundred miles an hour, go go go. Then you get out to Europe, and it's a bit more relaxed. <laughs> oh man, you know what? I uh, that's funny you said that. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a little bit more like you know, uh, enjoy life a little bit, a little bit more enjoy enjoy life. And the thing I like it's like we talk about the American League and all the all this stuff around. It's like uh, let's say let's say an example when I got to uh, Nottingham, uh, there's 25 guys and the only goal that we have is to win the championship. You know, that's, that's the, that's the main goal, all the 25 guys. So it's feel more like a family. Like, you know, it's feel more like, like, uh, like we all have a goal and we all know that we need each other. And then it's no one really is going to come help us or it's going to, someone's going to be out like, you know, so it's all together to go to one goal. That's, that's something like, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's different in North America. Which not America, yes, you want to win that goal, obviously, but there's a lot of movement outside mm. of that goal. Yeah, I don't know if you understand what I, I'm trying to say a little bit. So, well, that's one thing I, uh, when I first got there to Nottingham, and I, uh, Mad- uh, Madison, you know, like Sam Hurd and all those guys, they like came and to me, they said, hey, you know what, like you jump in, but we're 25 guys and we want this goal. So let's jump, like jump right into the boat. I know you can, and that's what I did. So that's one thing I, I really enjoy between. North America and uh, European hockey. And that must have, like, as you said, they, those guys came up to you and said that to you. That must have added such a motivating factor that we want you to come into this locker room and make a, this difference and be that key piece that takes us to that championship. Well, hey, you know what? Like, that's the thing. You know, like, uh, it's, it's a lot hard sometimes to size me how, how, like, the type of person or type of player I am sometimes. But uh, I, I knew when I talked to, uh, to, to Guillaume and all, that, all the, like, he, he told me exactly what what he was expecting from me. So when I first got there, I knew exactly that I would probably come back a little bit to my whole time hockey, mm. which I was like, really? And when I pretty jump in and uh, like our captain came, came to me, he's like, hey, he's like, you know what? Like all together, that's basically all together. You jump in, like I know, I heard about like you working hard, you have a good, uh, you have a good uh, work ethic. Uh, like, you know, like your guys around you enjoy being around you. So let's jump like right into it. So that's that was great, you know. That was great right away. Like you know, when your captain came to you and make you feel comfortable that way, I mean, it's easier to have a smile, you know, show up to the ring. And then you got that that Sam comes up to you and does stuff like that, and then you get to watch Sam on the ice, and he is just a next hey. level player. <laughs> you know, that would be funny if he came to me and say all that stuff, going the ice and don't work hard, and like, you know, and the next thing I know, he's the hard, hardest working guy in the team. He's the one who like show up before me at the ring. I was like, okay, you know what? You can tell me whatever you want, Sam. Like, I respect, I respect him a lot. I respect him a lot. And what did, what was it that Guy and Tim told you about Nottingham before you got there? What obviously you spoke to Dan Span, but what did Guy, Guy? Obviously, it's probably Guy who reaches out to you first, and then you get to speak to Tim about his ideas about where you're going to fit in the lineup, sort of thing. Well, like I, uh, I expect to be like you know, like when I talked to Dan Span, he told me that it's going to be a lot of pressure. Uh, obviously, Nottingham is like you know big. Uh, it's a big club in the I, uh, EIHL, and uh, I, I I knew I, I, I would have to be like you know professional, all that stuff. And I but I knew I would enjoy it because that's the type of person I am. I like to be like you know be professional and like uh, that motivate me, that give me a little more fire when I, I know people around me or the organization is behind me and behind the team that give you more like fire and you want to give more. So that's what Dan Spang told me because he knew. What happened? We talked a lot before uh, I moved to Nottingham. We still talk a lot, you know. He just buy a house right away. So if you listen to that, congrats, fine. <laughs> Back to the uh, But yeah, he. Um, so yeah, he told me all that stuff, and he knew what happened in Slovakia, and he's like, "You gotta enjoy it in um, in uh, in Nottingham." And uh, I talked to Tim um, when when I first got to uh, to Nottingham because it happened really quick. It happened in three four days. I move in and. Uh, Exactly what Guillaume told me before. When Guillaume just said, told me, he's like, he said exactly what I want for me. He, he knew who I was, but he got to, to learn how to use me and how what type of player I, I am uh, through the, 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 the eight or ten games I play with Nottingham. Uh, but the thing I like about Tim is like, it's, a, it's passion, you know? Mm. Uh, I first got there and then 30 minutes video, like, explained to me all the system. Uh, make sure I got all the details uh, figured out. Uh, then 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 leave me on the, you know, like with with some uh, some blank idea. Like he spent he spent a lot of time with me, 
uh, probably 15, 10 minutes, uh, you know, when I had questions, like, there was no barrier for me, he was there to help. So, uh, you know, when you first go there, your boss is working that way. I mean, man, like, you, you, you had to, you had to, to enjoy it. So I think Tim was, uh, was a great, uh, great asset for me to uh, get back to my game and enjoy hockey again, you know. And one of the unique things about the Elite League is that you come in, you get to play in this big arena in Nottingham. I remember you saying it to me before as well. When you, then you go to Manchester and it's a bit different and it's a bit more of a struggle to, because you say you, like, you know, you're trying to feed off the fans and it's a bit different in Manchester. <laughs> it's funny. It's a, it's a really, uh, not funny, but like, I don't know how to say that, but uh, I got to Sheffield first game. Mm. I got there on Thursday. We played on the Friday, I think. Or I, got there. I had one day. I got there to Sheffield. 10,000 people, you know, beautiful ring, uh, good crowd and all that stuff. Got to Nottingham, you know, same thing, even, you know, even better. It's better than, than Sheffield, that's for sure. So, good, good, comment, good comment, good <laughs> comment. Yeah, yeah, good comment, right? Yeah, yeah, Nottingham. And then uh, Manchester, I got to Manchester, and uh, the guy were talking about it a little bit, and you were like, and you see, you see, and then, uh, uh, I mean, I mean, not, uh, yeah, it was something different. Small, cold, <laughs> small, small. Uh, and the, the light was not as good, but I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that, that, that game. I enjoyed that game though because it's uh, it remind me a little bit like you know back in the days where like we used to play in those type of range, and uh, the ice it was the ice was really good. I really enjoyed the ice and uh, what uh, Manchester they had a good team. Like we, we, I think we lost that game in shootout if I remember well. Uh, so yeah, you know what I uh, I enjoy. Even if the ring and all that stuff, I enjoy playing in Manchester. So that was uh, the guys after the game. I didn't want to say I enjoy it, and the guy was surprised that I was there. Remind me when I play uh, a little bit, you know, a little bit different type of arena. I think you, you're, like you said, your first game was against Sheffield. Yeah. Now it doesn't get bigger than that. What did you get told going into that game? I can I cannot tell you how many guys, how many players, how many people around me told me how important was that game. <laughs> I was like, oh, you know what? No pressure. That's my first game. But uh, it was something amazing. Oh, man, like, you know what? Jumping, uh, like, in, on the ice, all those orange jerseys all, like, you know, all over the place. And, like, that, 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 that atmosphere in the rink. And, the, the, like, uh, I saw how hockey was important. Yeah, it was something great. It was, you know, I couldn't have a better start. I could not have a better start because, like, we won 5-1. Uh, it was a team win. Uh, you know, uh, Kevin Carr, goalie, play amazing. Um, uh, like, you know, all the guys all together. So, like, you know, you could not, I could not have a better, uh, better start. Uh, like Sheffield and Nottingham is a huge reality. Uh, you know what? Like, right now, like, even the hockey, like, you know, it's sunny outside hockey. When I think, talk about Sheffield, I hate them. You know, like, you know, I don't, not that I hate them, but you understand know what I mean? That yeah. reality, like, you know. Because we played them uh, a few games uh, later after that first game, and uh, had that you know that that momentum and to me to win that game more like it, maybe it was too much. That second game maybe it was too much, but you know hockey is a it's a mistake game. It's a game of mistakes. So, uh, but yeah, so like uh, like you asked me like I couldn't have a better start than that. That's for sure. And you came in. You had that first weekend. Then you had that break straight away, which was really strange to have. And then it was almost it was just. Big game after big game after big game. You got Belfast at home, Cardiff at home, Coventry at home, and it was just the, the running was so exciting. <laughs> yeah, it was. You know, like like you said, it was like two games and a break. Then you know, important game that we won seven three, and then uh, Belfast four zero. You know, that's funny. I remember all those games because like you know, it's right here, and, and to me, it's not far away. But uh, and then we get Coventry. Like you know, all those games was really important for us. So. It was it was something like we'll jump right into it, and uh, I'm not time to uh, to think, you know. I'm not time to think. Uh, I had that break, I'd take care of my little, you know, get better, uh, uh, work out with with uh, uh, with Pete, our uh, strength coach. We know break, so you know I didn't take I didn't really took time off except when my mom came down. You know, uh, I had to uh, I had to show her around a little bit, uh, but yeah. So it was really like some big games, and um, uh, uh, it was nice because I could you know. Kind of see different team, different type of hockey, different you know, uh, different style of hockey, different team, just to see like what team look like. 
So, yeah, it was nice. It was really cool. I'm going to start with that game against Belfast, the 4 0 game, because you scored in that game, and boy, did you enjoy that goal. Uh, it's been a while, you know, and then I, you know, after that pass that all he gave me, you know, like, I had to put that in. It was a great pass, a great setup by him, and, you know, I really enjoyed it with, uh, with all he saw. Uh, you know, when I put that goal at Parkin, when I saw that Parkin, it was all the pressure on my shoulder went off. And, uh, you know, like two, three days later, guys were making fun of me in the dressing room, you know, because I did that celebration with my <laughs> hand. And, and then, you know what, I was like, guys, like, you know what, I enjoy, I enjoy that, that that goal was my first goal in nothing high. And the guy was just, you know, making fun of me. And, you know, I, I can take it. You know what, it was a little bit more, uh, a little bit too much. But, uh, you know what, I don't regret it. That's for sure, I don't regret it. Because, like, even when we talk about it, I still got the little goosebump and, uh, I think the guys enjoy it too. I think the guys like you were like, you know what, you've been through so much like your whole season that uh, the guy was like, you know, you deserve that goal. And you know what, coming coming from Ali with that pass he gave me, like you know, after that we just play better and better together. Like you know, so that's you know, I think that we needed just that little one play that give us that connection and um, just to say one thing about him, like you said, what guys are working hard. Like this guy is is something else too. He is something else. Like he is uh, a work ethic. It's it's fun to to uh, to see and to uh, to uh, to be next to a guy like that because he work hard and then he make make you like really work harder. Which I try to work harder, but you know. <laughs> so he works hard and he looks as good as he does as well. It's just not fair, is it? What? So he works really hard and he looks as good as he does as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not fair. <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> Now, when you came in, were you surprised at the the level of the British players themselves? They like guys like Lacko and Ollie and Jackson Whistle. Were you were you surprised at how good those kind of guys were? They are. It's, to be honest, like Lacko and Ollie, like those guys. I was like, man, they they play well. And then uh, I was surprised because I watched some uh, some of the game, uh, the Great Britain game against uh, Hungary. Obviously, it was like you know, I, you know, few players who play for Hungary and. Uh, like the, the British player, I think they're uh, they're better than like the underrated. That's for sure. That's uh, really for sure. And uh, uh, like Lacko had some great goals when I was there. Holly, I played with him. I know exactly like how he, how like you know what I thought Holly was like 30, 30 years old. He's what twenty three or twenty twenty four. So twenty three, twenty four. Like yeah, exactly. So like you know, I was uh, every time I like so that's that's the thing. Like when you realize those guys, like they're really they're better than what they did. The, the people look when you look at them, they're way better than what they are. And same thing with the uh, West Holler goalie, like you know, probably one of the top goalie in like, Great Britain. Uh, so he's a great goalie too. So and then kids are a big demon, you know. Like how can you, uh, how can you uh, tell how, how can you have like you know like a big demon like that who can move? I I think that the British player are that the people should look at them in a different way. Uh, I think they, they should look at them with more uh, like they, they they're a really good player. Better than really better than Aitor. And you, like, like you said, you got to play a lot with Oli, and you played a lot with Ryan Horvat as well. And as a line yeah. to play against, I imagine you were a nightmare because that's three bodies who just crash and bang all night yeah. long. You know, we play six games together total, uh, uh, and then you know, game after game was just better and better. So it was fun. Like Ryan Horvat is like we live in the same building too, so we got kind of get that little connection outside of hockey too. Uh, and uh, like like you said, like right now, like when I you, I speak to you about it, I'm like that could be like you know a line that that could you know it, it, uh, it get better, get to the mm. next level, uh, and like game after game or like you know day after day practice after practice because we didn't really practice much together. Uh, we had so many games back to back and all that stuff. So uh, I'm sure that when you know if all that thing like if we could have that little like two weeks more, I think that connection would be even better. And, uh, would be a great line. Those guys, they work so hard. Like, so it's fun. It's fun. It's good. Yeah, you can see that in that Cardiff game. I think Ryan was the one who caused the turnover where you got to hit the first one past bounds. And then oh, yeah. the, the second goal almost was the best save that any hockey player has ever seen. What Talk me through that play from your perspective. <laughs> well, you know what? Like, I, uh, first of all, like, that, that save was amazing. I don't know how... I don't know how, like, I don't, I don't know if it was my shot was bad or I don't know if it was, I wasn't quick enough. But, like, I went to him after after the game and I said, hey, I said, look, like, 
that was one of the best saves I've ever seen. Like, I don't know how he did that. He didn't even see. He was like, yeah, like, too bad the puck roll. I was like, yeah, it was good for me, though. <laughs> but the thing is, like, we got, I got the puck. I think Ryan, Ryan Arbat put the puck out of the zone. Hit their D, man. The next time I know, the puck is right in front of me. And I'm two on, two on against zero, two against the goalie with Ollie. And I give him the fact that try to wait, wait as long as possible, give him the puck. And he give it right back to me. I didn't expect it, but, you know get ready and try to put that in. And I saw the puck go up, hit the glove. And I was like, no way, he didn't say that. The puck roll in. And I don't know, some reason, once again, when the puck roll in, I was so excited that split second, that, oh, he stopped it too. Yes, it's a goal. That I just went nuts again to celebrate. And, you know, it was a good, it was a good, big goal too. The game turning 3-2, I think, for us. So two goals in not even a minute. So, I mean, that was something like, you know, like something I'm like, oh yeah, let's go. I make a difference. That's awesome. Uh, the next game, the next game, the next night against Coventry, which is unfortunately the last game that was in Nottingham last year. You did something I don't think many people were expecting. You, your name was called in the shootout, and you pulled a really nice move and managed to score. I don't know. Why. I hope I hope all the goalies won uh, won the that, but I got one move and it, it, it worked. It worked. You know. You know. It's funny. It's funny because uh, I got a story. Uh, I, I mean, you know, in America, in the American League, I wasn't really uh, like a guy who put points, right? Numbers are, are, I was more that type of crappy guy, third line. And uh, that, one, that one game, we go, uh, we go uh, so I was playing for Nash, for Nashville for the team, which was uh, uh, Milwaukee, the Admirals. And we go to nine or ten players. And, no, maybe not nine, maybe eight or whatever. And the coach called my name. He's like, Tuesday, you go, you know, so I go, man. Who guy didn't win the game? And after the game, he's like, hey, he's like, yeah, hey, coach, I got one move, you know. And, and then since then, he always put me first. And uh, one journalist asked, asked him, he's like, that was funny. He's like, he's like, you know, Tuesday's a third, he's a third liner, you know, doesn't get uh, any more that crappy guy, that grinder who was like, you know, why do you put him first? And he's like, well, he told me, he came to me once and he told me I had one move and it worked. So that's the reason why I put him. He's like, you got enough confidence in his one move. <laughs> so now I say that, I'm going to have to change my move, practice all the move if the goalie uh, are <laughs> listening to it, you know? All you need is two. I'm sorry? All you need is two. <laughs> two, yeah, two. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm obviously the work on the summer, yeah. And obviously the, next, the weekend after that is the one in Belfast, which is where it was like, dude, like, we were waiting for the news on what was happening. It was like, do we go? Don't we go? And then nothing happened. So it was like, yes, you go. What What was going off in in the group at that time? Were you all, this is happening, we're going to go and do this? Or is it, we don't know? You know what? Most of the guy were, uh, like most of the guy would say, I was pretty much all the guy I talked to. They wanted to play because we had something on the line. Hmm. You know, we didn't want that season to end because we had eight games left. And, uh, with the way that we were playing and the, the mood in the team, like uh, we believe. So that was the biggest thing. Like, you know, we, I, all the guys was like, you know what? Yeah, like all the, all the league, but like, if we can, you know, finish the league, whatever, like with all the scenarios that we, uh, we had in mind. Uh, but obviously at the same time, uh, we have to talk, think about, you know, the person more than hockey. So that's the thing. And when we saw that all the other league shut down, the NHL shut down, and we were in Belfast and tried to figure out something. Uh, I, think some, I think some guys got scared, obviously. Obviously, I think, you know, like, uh, we didn't know what was going on, uh, what was going to happen. Uh, so that's the reason why. But at the same time, like I said, like, we had that chance to finish first. You know, we're not too far away. Uh, the way we're playing, and then uh, with that loss that we had uh, uh, right before, you know, right before the – the, the whole thing uh, shut down. Uh, all the guys had that that anger, so they wanted to. So that's the reason why it was a little like, like it was a big disappoint, disappointment for us. I think it's we were right there. And was it a bit of a a relief when it, the news did come? Because then you actually know what's happening. Like then there's, there's something that you know. Okay, I need to get home now. I need to do this rather than in the back of your mind. This might happen. Well, yeah, obviously you know, like like you want to play hockey. Oh, you want to play hockey, but like when the whole thing was like, okay, now the season's over, you have to go home, which, you know, like, okay, yes, my family was happy, but my friend was happy to see me, but at the same time, uh, like, it, 
the whole situation it was stressful. Mm. It's stressful. We came back from Belfast right away. You know, we heard we we heard some stuff left, stuff, some stuff right. Like you know, we, all the, the the thing all together. Uh, um, so yes, I had a little stress uh, coming back and like, okay, I have to go home now. Like I, I explained to you a little bit earlier, like uh, I had to book two flights. It was a little mm. like, you know, a little stressful uh, uh, to, to get home, but uh, with, with some, some step back and look at it. I mean, I think we, I think we did the right, the right choice, the right, that we, we picked the right option, uh, like, you know, shutting down everything and make sure that everything is, is fine. Uh, it's something I, I hope I will never live again, you know, mm-hmm. never experience again. Uh, but I got a home safe, so that's something I really like, you know, really, I was really happy about that and everything went okay. So I think the organization uh, took care of us like big time. Like young, young Buse, like with all the work that he had to do, like, you know, that's one part of his work. He, he did a great job, like a great job about trying to figure out everything, which is not that easy at that moment, you know. A pandemic, you know, that, that, that crisis, you know. And you got some quite nice news on your way home when you got, found out you were voted the fans' most entertaining player of the year. What did that mean to you? Because that shows the connection you made with the fans in such a short space of time. You know what? I think, uh, like, the fans are like, you know, the, the energy that we need. So, um, uh, you know, when, the, when some stuff happened and you get that crowd popping in and then boom, you got to. So for me, it was huge. It was huge. Uh, when I got the award, uh, it was uh, it was more than like you know, okay, yes, you know what, I did something like more than hockey. I think that people enjoyed the way I uh, interact with them, which for me it's huge. Like it's huge because I uh, uh, I think it, they are a big part of hockey, a mm. uh, big part of sport, and uh, uh, it it was easy with Nottingham fans to like connect with them because like they come to you, but like with res- they respect you as a as a player, they respect you as a person. Uh, so it's easy to connect. It's easy to talk to them, um, uh, and they're like they're, they're always there. Even when we lost against Belfast, that, that game at home, uh, I got a few texts like, you know what? Like I, I, I mean, I cannot really say what they were saying about those, those, those steel head, but, uh, those, sorry, those uh, Sheffield uh, player. But uh, you know what? I'm just saying that they, they, they're always behind you, no matter what. So far, which what I, I was with them, with a month and a half in Nottingham. So that's the thing. He, uh, I really enjoy like when we were winning in Paris, I got to text and, or like people would try to talk to me about, about like, you know, hockey, but when we lost, it was the same, uh, the same, you know, mood, the same thing. Like, hey, you know what? Like the same people came to me again. So that's something I really enjoy. Uh, they're there in a good, good and bad moment, uh, which got a few fans, you know, so. And then is that what you miss the most? Is it being in front of, is it playing the game in front of an audience? Is that, is that kind of what you miss the most about all of it? You know what, I, I got a, you know, that's funny that, because uh, I always say that, and Tim wrote it too, like, you love the game and the game will love you back. You know, that's one thing, uh, that's one thing I'll always say. And uh, uh, yeah, I did. I did miss it, man. Like, you know, uh, watching the game, uh, sorry, playing the game is something, but like, playing the game with, like, you know, all those, those other stuff around, like, you know, uh, the crowd and, uh, yeah, something I really enjoy and I miss it, like, a lot, so. I would say, as I say, when everything comes back to normal, with the way everything ended, I'm guessing it makes you more, even more motivated when ice hockey comes back to make it count and to win some things, win some trophies and oh, win some. That's for sure. I'm sure I'm not the only one who, like, you know, uh, right now in their home and thinking about hockey. I'm sure there's a bunch of hockey players right now and thinking about that. With the NHL coming back, you know, let's give us hope. And mm. uh, our season is going to – come back to normal at one point and all that stuff so uh yeah it's more motivation for me obviously like you know i don't know hopefully everything will be like you know on the right path and everything will be set up uh, in the right way uh and everybody you know go back to, to work and playing hockey normal so yeah so it's gonna be more motivated uh motivation for me uh i've been working out a lot like twice a day right now for uh it's beautiful in canada right now so uh i've been working out a lot and uh uh so that's the biggest motivation right now is that. I'd say, I, and I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit now because I want to end this. I want to end this on some on a light note and some fun stuff. So tell me some of your funniest stories from your time in ice hockey. They can be from Nottingham, from the AHL, from juniors. Just some of your funniest stories. Oh, and a funny story, yeah. Uh, like I got a I got a few good story, but like hockey story about a 
uh, it was a, it was a big final. Well, I got two stars. Like the first okay. one, it was a big final. I know I got the final, and then uh, they, they announced the player. You know, announced the player, and then we were not supposed to play uh, to win like that final. And the guy was like a little nervous before the game. I was really nervous for some reason. Uh, I'm gonna remember that. And then they announced all the players one after one. I'm uh, number seventy-seven, so it's you know it's uh, way like I'm way back in the in the line. And we all stop at the blue line, and the next thing I know, I, I'm i really motivated, a lot of energy. I want to come out of the gate, really, like when they announce my name, so I announce my name, looks, try to stop, it hit something on the ice, I don't know what happened, and then went down all the blue line. When I say all the blue line, is it started with one guy, the first player, and all the players went down. Because it was dark, nobody could see. And then I was one of the last players, and they opened up the lights, and all the players was down on the ice. So no one was, no one was, uh, was at the blue line standing up. So I, I was the one who, like, you know, make it happen. So yeah, yeah that was like a great. bowling ball, <laughs> like a, like, you know, like a domino, like boom, 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 boom. And then I was like, oh boy, that's a good, like, a, you know what? A hand up. Um, uh, it was funny because after that we talked about it and all that stuff. And then, uh, it ended up like, the, the team, you know, like, you know, like all the stress went out. Everybody was laughing. We were like, okay, what's going on? Blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, so we kind of like, all the stress went down and we play we played the game a little bit. So that's one bad thing happened, but one good thing ended up being a good thing and we ended up winning the game. So for some reason I remember that like it was yesterday. And the other time the other the other funny story is uh is uh in uh, when when I was playing for uh, Team Quebec and we played the US for the gold uh, the final the, the championship game the, the gold medal. Um, Second period, uh, you know what, the first time it's called RDS. It's a, it's a huge sport, uh, a huge sport channel in, in Canada, in Quebec, in France, RDS, and they're filming the game, and you know what, it's team Quebec final against the USA. You, you go hard, you know, you want to win, and then uh, I tried to hit the guy, uh, and the guy move out, like really like, you know, like go out of the way, and the thing I know is I flip over the bench into the camera of RDS, the guy who was filming the game from RDS, hit the guy, the camera went off, all that stuff. And then it was a huge, not a big gag, uh, Joe, but like after the after the game, we won the game, won the golf final, but like that that hit that I missed and went over the bench was a, was a, you know, running gag for like two, three days after that. And even on TV, they show me, they show me doing this, they show myself doing this on the, on the TV. Oh, it was like, you know, my friend wasn't even texting me to say, congrats, was say, hey, how was the boy? Hey, eh? how was it? You know, so it was pretty funny. That was actually really funny too. Oh, they're, they're almost like you remember the moments in the games, but it's those kooky, funny moments that stick with you. They're the memories oh, yeah. you keep, aren't they? You know what? I'm happy. I'm happy my mom and my dad are there right now next to me because they would laugh because they give me, you remember, remember that? Like, you know, it was really something like it's a running gag in the family. It's a running gag, you know. Like, because I stand up, my helmet was on the side, the camera was like, you know, it was funny. Yeah, it was something. And I'd say, if you want to finish this, I can't thank you enough for giving up your time for this. This has been, this has been awesome. This has been great. What, have, you got hey, a man, I love that. have you got a message for the Panthers fans to close this on? Because obviously you're so cl- you are so close to them. <laughs> no, I, I got, you know what, I like, I like to interact. Yeah, I got, I got, some, I got some, uh, some fans like... Uh, 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 who's writing to me and stuff like that? Oh, they, they hope I'm back next season, and obviously with all that, I want to be back with the. How you say like that? that, that what I live in Nottingham, like I want, I want to reproduce that in a better way. So mm-hmm. obviously, uh, uh, like I want to go back, and that's the reason why the fans are like you know writing me. I think they they, they want to have a, a type of player in the, in their team as well. So I mean, I, I I hope I hope that everything will be like like I said, everything will be back to normal, and then everything will work out. But I have some fans who like I want to say hi to them and then like, you know what like keep it up in that that tough time. Uh, like I said before, um, everything looks to go in a better way, and uh, like I mean can't wait for Hockey to be back. And thank you very much for the support. Appreciate that.